The other day, I was with some friends who happened to be dancers at Disneyland. They were all about 20 years old, did strenuous exercise every day in the parades, and were pretty lean. One of them was explaining to the others about how he had to go on a juice fast to detox. He explained that to prepare for the fast, one needed to eat nothing but fruit for 15 days, which really makes you grumpy, he said. <laughs> You'll hate yourself at first, but then you get used to it. His friends were eager to do it with him as they needed to detox as well. Let me say this, juicing doesn't detox a damn thing. If you have heavy metals in your system, then you should see a doctor for treatment. In fact, you should see a doctor before you make any lifestyle changes, including juicing. If you eat chicken McNuggets and Diet Coke all day, then drinking fresh juice is probably an improvement. Going without junk food, which can be considered a bit toxic, is always a good idea, and that can be considered detoxing. But if you're planning on an extreme diet change in which you're going to suffer, then why not make a healthier choice and eat whole fruits and vegetables and a glass of water? Here's what juice stores don't tell you. The most important parts of the fruits and vegetables that eliminates the junky stuff from the body is the fiber. The one thing that's taken out during the production of juice is fiber. According to the Mayo Clinic, fiber normalizes bowel movements and nobody wants an abnormal bowel movement. Fiber helps with heart health, lowering cholesterol, and reducing inflammation, which is the kind of health results that juicers would love to have. Fiber also does some less glamorous stuff like improved bowel health, helping to reduce the likelihood of stuff like hemorrhoids and diverticulitis. And it helps regulate blood sugar. Fiber is one of the best things about fruits and vegetables, and juice doesn't have it. I don't mean to suggest that juice is a bad thing. In fact, I'm pro-juice. I own a juicer, and once a week I go to a juice place near campus and get a juice with kale and vegetables. More often, I get a vegetable smoothie, but I'll get to that in a moment. If you eat a lot of junky food, and you don't get your fruits and vegetables every day, then fresh juice, particularly a green juice, might be the best part of your diet. I just don't think you should go on for extended periods of time drinking juice alone. I know it may sound confusing because juices have so many phytochemicals and flavonoids which have been shown to help in many healthy ways, not to mention vitamins and minerals. Let me tell you about a recent study that might illuminate what I'm saying. The Harvard School of Public Health did a study published this year in the British Medical Journal. They found that eating grapes, blueberries, and apples is associated with a lower risk of diabetes. The Harvard School of Public Health reported that Quote, people who ate at least two servings a week of certain whole fruits, particularly blueberries, grapes, and apples, reduced their risk for type 2 diabetes by as much as 23% in comparison to those who ate less than one serving per month. Conversely, those who consumed one or more servings of fruit juice each day increased their risk of developing type 2 diabetes by as much as 21%. The researchers found that switching up from three servings a week of juice to whole fruits would result in a 7% reduction in diabetes risk." Unquote. They explained, the fruit's glycemic index, which is a measure of how rapidly carbohydrates in a food boost blood sugar, did not prove to be a significant factor in determining a fruit's association with type 2 diabetes risk. However, the high glycemic index of fruit juice, which passes through the digestive system much more rapidly than fiber-rich fruit, may explain the positive link between juice consumption and increased diabetes risk. In other words, whole fresh fruits and vegetables improve your health, but juices from those fruits and vegetables aren't quite as good for you. In fact, if you're overweight, and have metabolic syndrome or diabetes, the excess sugar in fruit, which isn't mitigated by the fiber, can be bad for you. You should check with your doctor before you start juicing. If a Harvard study is a little too stuffy for you, Andrew Weil is saying something similar. If you don't know him, he's a professor at the University of Arizona and a holistic health guy who recommends lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. In fact, he's the founder of the True Food Kitchen, which serves a lot of juices. In a recent conversation with Lynn Rosetto Casper, he said, A big misunderstanding I see is not knowing the difference between fruit and fruit juice. 
Fruit has fiber in it, which blunts the effect of the sugar. Fruit juice is a concentrated sugar source. In California and other states, when there's been the grassroots movement to get soda vending machines out of schools, they've been replaced with fruit juice vending machines. There's not really much difference. The new research coming out on sugar is very concerning. One of the main components of sugars is a compound called fructose. It's often called fruit sugar, which sounds innocuous, but the human body can't digest fructose. It disrupts liver metabolism. Table sugar is half fructose. Some sweeteners, like agave syrup, are much higher, like 80% fructose. You really want to minimize consumption of that, and that means trying to cut down on all sweets. If there was one thing that I'd focus on in our culture, it would be sugary drinks. If we could really focus on that and make those go away, that would be a huge advance. I have a friend who occasionally says that he's going to turn over a new leaf and eat healthier foods. Unfortunately, he never eats a leaf. He likes starch and cheese like macaroni and cheese, enchiladas, and pizzas. For him, I would recommend that he replace the cola with some fresh fruit and vegetable juice with spinach in it. He won't eat a smoothie, but he'll drink a juice, and that's an improvement for him. Here's how I would set up the hierarchy of choices for most people. If you're drinking sugary sodas currently, switch up to fresh fruit and vegetable juice. Now, if you think that there's no problem because you drink diet soda, think again. Kelly McGonigal of Stanford describes the problem with diet soda this way. Quote, there's a little known effect of diet soda that contributes to hunger, overeating, and weight gain. The sweet taste tricks the body into taking up glucose from the bloodstream in anticipation of a blood sugar spike. You're left with less energy and less self-control while the body and brain wonder what happened to the sugar rush they were promised." Unquote. So, it's better to switch up from any artificially flavored soda to fresh, real juice. If you have the wherewithal, then switch up from drinking juice to eating whole fresh fruits and vegetables and drinking plain water or blended smoothies with whole fresh vegetables. If you want to detox, and that's hard for most people to define, then try that vigorous exercise that makes you sweat and you'll be happy. <laughs>